Wow, so much time passed since I was here last time. I've missed it actually. Hello and welcome. My name is Vlad, and this is a classic devlog video. Format that I've started this channel this a year ago. So it's kind of a first best for this channel. I'm documenting my game and other dev journeys for a whole year straight now. I think it's a great fit. Quality of video improved a lot in the last year. Or at least I want to think so. I've put a lot of effort into better thumbnails, best quality of audio they can deliver, and etc. But there are a lot of things to improve still. And I actually like this meta story of my journey. In this video I'm going to talk about one of the things I did to improve quality of my videos, and how I did that. But first I just want to say thank you to all of those who's watching. A few months ago I knew most of my subscribers personally, because most of them were my real life friends who liked what I'm doing. But it's not true anymore. At this point I don't know most of you subscribers, but I want to know you better, and I want to say thank you. Those of you who aren't subscribed yet, consider to click this button and ring the bell if you like what I'm doing. It's free for you and makes a difference for you too. Now let's get into the news of the channel and my uploads. A few months ago I moved from classic devlogs mostly to time-lapse devlog format, where I'm showing the process of drawing some assets and describing my thought process and workflow behind it. This format takes much less editing and because of it I can share some of my work without spending 3 weeks working on making content and one more just editing video. With this format I was able to upload more frequently. Videos were up almost every week and views on it are higher than most of the other videos, so seems that people like this type of content. But, as you might have noticed, in the last few weeks I've only uploaded one video. And there are a few reasons for that. First of all, June was a very tough month for me. Uni took a lot of time. My participation in Dream Game Jam 2021 was the only time I was able to find in this month. So I haven't recorded footages for time lapses in the whole month. All the videos uploaded in this period were made from footages out of my backlog. But wait, we're getting to the end of July already. What about this month? Well, it was quite a busy too. I've got a very good internship for summer where I'm working on the project I really like. But I've signed an day, so sadly I can't tell you about that. I want to clarify that my schedule in this month isn't that bad actually. I have time to work on my own projects, just not that much. But this doesn't mean that I had time to make a new content. Record temperatures hit hard on me and on my hardware. My PC froze dead twice when it was processing edited version of the last video. I had to clean it up and make everything to cool it off just to continue working. And that's not all of the problems. My apartment located quite close to a busy road, so all of the audio I've recorded for my videos were recorded with closed windows. Recording these lines is actually a great fit for me, because I'm feeling like I'm going to melt just right now. But with all that being said, the main reason that I didn't have time to make a new content isn't the temperature or work. It's a quality of my time lapse videos itself. I've addressed this problem in the past videos shortly. Here is raw footage of one of my time lapses. And here's the same footage but sped up for a video. As you can see, when I'm detailing a piece, I'm zooming it in and out from time to time. But when it's sped up 15 to 20 times original speed, it gets finicky because zooming happens too often in the footage. I've spent a lot of time trying to address this problem. You see, I'm ready to change my workflow and work with a static canvas all the time. Zooming is a key tool for me when I'm working on details. That said, I had to find a solution that lets me zoom my canvas and at the same time keep it static for the camera. And it actually didn't take too long to get a great recommendation on Reddit. Good that I've gotten to this format now and not a few years ago. Because just now I sprite version 1.3 beta moved to a new window management engine, which supports multi-window applications. I'm also going to leave a link to the history of this issue written by also of the I sprite himself. It's quite an interesting stuff. So now in the new version we can move a preview window out of the working zone and record it, and it isn't affected by zooming. Only thing left to do is just add this window to OBS and record. Uh, wait, uh, of course. 
Something like this went through my head the moment I realized there is no option to record a preview window through OBS. Let's get into the technical aspect of what happened here. First of all, how can we get a picture from a window? There are a lot of libraries and tools to do so, but all of them are based on the concept of HWND. It might have other names in Unix-based systems, but we are not going to get into these details. And how to get this handle? The main and I think the only viable way to do so is to get a list of all the windows and let users choose one by name. All the programs, including OBS, use it. But in our case there is actually no name. To be fair, preview window has a name, but it's buggy and it's not always appear in the list which confuses OBS a lot. I've seen some screenshots with an option to show windows without names on some OBS forms, but I wasn't able to find such an option. Seems that it was removed at some point. So now there is no way to record this window through OBS. It might change in the later versions of a sprite, maybe when it gets to stable at least. But I wouldn't put my money on it. Preview window is quite a specific tool, and ability to record it is not a first concern for a sprite devs, surely. To sum it up, there is just no easy way to record a preview window through OBS. But who said that I'm looking for an easy way? Obvious solution is to record a full screen and then extract window out of the footage. Problem with this approach is that when you record a screen, there is no handle that would say OBS what you want to record. This means that you have to keep a preview on top of the other windows and waste screen space on it. I think we can all agree that buying a new monitor to be able to record time lapse without obstructing your main screen is a little too much, even for a person as crazy as me. So I had to look for other solution. My problem with it was that I've stuck with this idea that I have to record a screen. I've spent a lot of time looking for some options to create a virtual screen or something like that. And let me save your time looking for it. There are no solutions that would create a virtual screen that isn't part of your physical screen. Only viable option is to use a laptop as additional monitor. But it would only work if you have one monitor on your main machine. Thanks for this limitation, Microsoft. After I finally accepted the fit and therefore decided to think out of the box, I've quite easily came with a solution that works. And it's not that complicated. If OBS aren't able to find our window, let's create all the windows that it would see and show all the content of the main window in it. It's like a stand double, but for a window. Hey, what he just said? Don't know, man. Something crazy about stand doubles and cloning windows. Let me out here. Wait, wait, don't get confused uh, yet. Let me explain. As I've said, the only way used by programs to get a window handle is through choosing it by name. Does that mean that this is the only way of getting the handle? Well, the only handy one. Yes. But if you are desperate, as me, then there are some options. This is the time to unleash your dark side, the Python developer skills. But be careful, it's a very dangerous beast. Their bite might give you nausea, large sickness and uncontrollable desire to solve every problem in Python. Why are you laughing? We are talking about very serious stuff here. Anyway, I'm just going to continue. Solutions that I came up with is based on the fact that we can store array of the windows and check if there is a difference between the array received now and the last time we checked. With this nifty trick, only thing left to do is to somehow make a preview window pop up while the program waits. And that's actually the easiest part. You see, when I'm opening home tab of a sprite, preview window disappears, and when I'm opening an image tab, it appears again. So we just have to start our Python program, which waits for changes in the list to happen. Then we open any image tab in the sprite, thus making a change, which includes a preview. This code gives us a list of all the new windows, and we just need to choose one that is called preview or has an empty name. With this simple trick, we now have a HWND of preview window. Only thing left to do is to somehow fit it into the OBS. And my solution to it is as simple and robust as it can be. I'm just opening a window and streaming everything from our preview right onto this new window, which has a name and therefore OBS sees it. To stream one window to another, I've used solution from this video with a few tweaks. 
huge shout out to Learn Code by Gaming. Video itself is a bit too long in my opinion, but it might be a good thing for beginners. Anyway, this solution uses Win API library and OpenCV for a very fast transfer of data from one video to another. There are a lot of simple solutions, but knowing that I might want to use it in the future for some other projects and that I'm going to post it, I've decided to use fast solution and not the easiest one. Obviously, it's only working on the Windows systems, which is a bit of a bummer. If you have a similar fast solution for all the OSs, I'm open to pull requests. Link to GitHub is in the description, as always. So, now you know what took me so long and why I wasn't able to upload much. But, now that problem is solved, I can work on new time lapses again. There is still one recorded using old method in my backlog, but after that there will be a lot of content of better quality. I think we just barely scratched the surface of what I want to create for the new version of Atomic Shift. This means that a lot of time lapses are common. Consider subscribing and ring the bell, not miss all of it. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this good old classic devlog video. I leave your thoughts in the comment section, and feedback is much appreciated. Stay safe, have a good day, and bye!